Well, Tri-County family, thank you so much for joining us tonight for our prayer meeting. Um, you know that over the last several weeks or over the weeks of October, uh, we were doing a missionary emphasis for our church family. And I know a number of you really, really enjoyed that. And then starting last week, coming out of our general election for the United States, we took some time to address some current issues and current and current events regarding the election. And uh, let me just say really quick for both Max and myself, we really appreciate the encouragement that we got from you all uh, about how what we shared from God's word was an encouragement to you. So again, um, that kind of feedback helps us know how we're being most effective with God's word and the ministry of God's word in your life. Well, starting today and through the rest of this month and then into December, we're going to be taking some time to kind of theme out our Wednesday night prayer service and Bible study around our current American culture. Obviously, uh, coming into the end of thanks, uh, November is Thanksgiving, and so we're going to take some time over this week and next week to talk about the aspect of gratitude, specifically biblical gratitude, and then coming into uh, Christmas, uh, we might do some things, I've been kind of playing around in my head, doing some things that kind of uh, uh, help our study on Sunday mornings uh, through the Advent calendar uh, or uh, supplementing that with some other aspects uh, historically around our time uh, of Christmas. And so again, uh, really looking forward to that and then how those things intersect with our prayer life. So uh, let's go ahead and let's begin tonight by talking about this aspect of gratitude and specifically the believer's thanksgiving uh, as opposed to just thanksgiving in general. Now, I don't know about you, but for those who were maybe from my generation a little farther back, Thanksgiving was incredibly special in a number of ways. It, it seemed like uh, a, even in public school, uh, the focus would turn to uh, the historical aspect of Thanksgiving. We would uh, read and study the, uh, the settlement of uh, those early settlers that were coming to the Americas and how uh, Native Americans uh, helped really that, that group of uh, first pilgrims survive and make it through the winter by their knowledge of the area. And so they had that aspect of Thanksgiving at that first uh, uh, harvest time. Uh, but then there were also other aspects of Thanksgiving that we appreciate. Uh, there was a focus on the material and immaterial blessings of our life. Uh, my mom would always cause us to go around the table and we already expected us to have something that we would thank the Lord for or a person we were thankful for. And, and uh, boys, at least in our household, really weren't very imaginative. And so I always hope to go first. That way, my two brothers would end up getting stuck almost repeating the same thing I said. Um, but then all of that was punctuated by family and food and football. <laughs> um, but uh, for the believer, our roots when it comes to the aspect of Thanksgiving go much farther back than just uh, the old world settlement of the Americas by Europeans. Rather, uh, the aspect of Thanksgiving goes all the way back to the beginning of time. And so here's what I want to do. I want us to first look at the fact that you and I, we were created for Thanksgiving. Turn in your Bible with me to Romans chapter 1. And as you're turning there, let me go ahead and kind of set the context for this. Paul is explaining here in Romans chapter 1 what has gone wrong with the world, how it's come off the rails. And he gives us a, a glimpse of God's intent for us when it comes to the aspect of our gratitude towards our creator and the original order that he created. And so if you're there, just follow along in verse 21. He says, for although they knew God, speaking of Adam and Eve and then people in general, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and in their foolish heart uh, and their foolish hearts were darkened. You see, part of the reason we understand that we were created was for this aspect of gratitude or thanksgiving. It was to be thankful to God for what he did for us. And this is why we then have so many commands, especially in the New Testament, we'll look at those in a bit, towards thanksgiving and praise. Now, if you want to know the difference between thanksgiving and praise, we're not going to take that apart here. We might not even take it apart next week. Uh, on Minutes That Matter, just this last Monday, I posted uh, a study from God's Word um, out of the Psalms uh, that talks about the difference between praise and thanksgiving. I would encourage you to go back and look at that. However, 
that is again why we have so many commands about thanksgiving and praise. Mankind, you and I, were created to uh, to be thankful to God, to appreciate God for all of his incredible blessings and his character that drives those blessings and promises in our life and to articulate that. But as we just saw in verse 21, things came off the rails pretty quickly. And what we find is that mankind fell from thanksgiving. And so, Max, take a moment just to kind of unpack that for us. Yeah, yeah, I like how you put that. I mean, uh, we're thinking of uh, thankfulness almost as like a, a thankfulness train, right? Mm-hmm. It's going down the tracks. We're doing what we're supposed to. Mankind is living in light of what God desires for him. But actually, we see that this goes off the rails much faster than we could probably even imagine. In fact, turn with me to Genesis chapter 2, where we'll actually see where God lays out uh, why really mankind is supposed to be thankful, um, the incredible blessings that he has given him. Actually, as I'm thinking about this, actually, I'd like you to go to the end of uh, the first chapter of Genesis. We're going to be reading verses 27 through 31. I will reference uh, chapter 2. So Genesis chapter 1, starting in verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw that everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and morning in the sixth day. Throughout the creation account, God is creating a perfect and good creation for his glory and for our good. And what we see at the end of chapter 1 is that man is created ultimately to be thankful for the things that God has given him. All of these amazing things that he lists out were given to Adam and Eve for their stewardship and for their good, as it is supposed to have been given to us. And so now let's look back in uh, chapter 2 as well, too. Let's look at verse 8 where God recounts again what he had done. Verse 8 of Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. In the east there he put a man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made spring up every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge in good and evil. God had given them everything that they could possibly want. This is the best situation that we could be in. Uh, As much as we love our Thanksgiving tables and our family, we understand that oftentimes there's tension in our families, or there might not be enough food, or there's hardships that come into our lives that are manifested in times of this Thanksgiving season. That's not the intention for God's creation. We were actually created to be in perfect thankful, gracious unity with each other and with God. But sadly, um, it went off the rails incredibly quickly. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3, where we see this, uh, this really this perfect train getting totally derailed from a great situation to ultimately sin and destruction. Genesis chapter 3, we'll start at the beginning. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you shall surely not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You see, this is the temptation that man fell into, which is ultimately the lie that God does not have our best interest in mind, and that the things that he gives us aren't really good, but instead, they're actually bad for us. They're constraining, and they aren't things to be thankful for. Instead, they're things to be pushed away, and other things 
are to be pursued instead. You see, um, as we transition into our prayer points for this, we have to remember this false idea that uh, God's, uh, essentially what God has given us, these thankful things, that uh, things that we should be thankful for, are, uh, as Eve fell into, um, that they're not actually good for us, but instead somehow we can redefine what is good for us, and that ultimately leads us to uh, hearts of covetousness and ultimately forgetting who is truly in control. So in light of that, we might think this is a really weird place <laughs> to begin our time of gratitude and thanksgiving to God, but it needs to begin here. Uh, we need to see and understand the times in which we are uh, ungracious and unthankful towards God. And so as you see the prayer points come up on the screen in front of you, and we give you a couple of minutes to pray over those, the focus is going to be on the aspect of one, repentance, forgiveness and repentance, but then uh, looking for ways in which we live out an ungracious life. Uh, because we need to understand it just as uh, unthankfulness was connected to Adam and Eve's sin in a very real way, unthankfulness, uh, ungraciousness is connected to every one of our sins. Mm -hmm. And so as we begin to realize that, uh, we then can begin to put on, and we'll see that in a little bit, uh, an aspect of gratitude and thankfulness and praise in our life uh, that would cause us uh, to live a life of growing holiness to God. So let's go ahead and take a couple minutes here, uh, take a look at those uh, prayer points in front of you, and then we'll come back in a couple of minutes and we'll pick up our study next. So even though man fell from his relationship with God because of his ingratitude and unthankfulness, uh, we see in Scripture that we were redeemed by thanksgiving. So turn in your Bible with me to Luke chapter 22. And as you're, as you're turning there, uh, allow me to go ahead and set the context. You see, God himself in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, entered into our thankless world and lived a perfect life of gratitude towards his Father. He died on the cross on our behalf, friends, to, in a very real way, uh, provide a cure for our chronic ingratitude in our life. So I want you to follow along 
as Christ foretells the sacrifice, uh, uh, his sacrifice on the cross here in uh, verses 17 through 22. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and pick that narrative up in verse 17. Uh, Christ says here, and he took the cup and when he had given thanks, thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten saying, this cup that is poured out for you is, is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me, uh, uh, betrays me is with me on this table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. And then they began to question one another about who that traitor was. Look, I want us to understand that Jesus is not only God himself, but also is ideally uh, the perfect thankful human. Here we see him thanking God uh, for his upcoming sacrifice that he is personally going to make on behalf of all humans and all humankind for all sin and have as a gift that aspect of a restored relationship with God when they put salvational faith in that sacrifice. And, and even though in the garden he would literally sweat, bl uh, sweat blood and he would ask for the cup to be taken from him, he was still thankful uh, of what God had instituted from eternity past to save fallen mankind. And he was thankful for it. And he models for us that aspect of thanksgiving. Uh, now, I don't mean to steal any thunder possibly from uh, Max here, but think of that. I, I know that probably all of us do. But how much is thanksgiving a part of the communion service when you're holding that element in your hand, uh, that symbol of Christ's blood and body? How much of that is an aspect of not just the confession of sin, but the thankfulness of that whole uh, sacrifice, that whole burnt offering that Christ was for us on the cross? And, and so as we think of this, just think of the ways in which Christ was thankful through his ministry. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty five. 25, he was thankful. Think, I always, I'm amazed by this. He was thankful that God the Father had hid his knowledge, the salvational knowledge from unrepentant, ill-calcitrant, uh, sinning cities and their residents, and that God had revealed and helped children to understand the simple message of sin and repentance and salvation in those who had a childlike faith. In John eleven forty one, 41, he was uh, thankful that God the Father listened to his son, and that was just before he called Lazarus from the dead. We also see him being simply thankful for the provision of, uh, uh, of loaves and fishes and uh, seven loaves and five fishes. And then uh, after that aspect of thankfulness to God the Father, he then feeds 5,000 uh, with all of that. You know, I would encourage you sometime, it's a really neat study, to go through the New Testament narratives, uh, uh, the gospel narratives uh, of Jesus Christ and see how many times he thanked the Father from his lips in his ministry. It's absolutely incredible and it's an, an, a wonderful encouragement. But now, because we have been redeemed by thanksgiving, we see that we have also then been born to thanksgiving. So Max, kind of again, take that apart for us. Yeah, absolutely. So we've seen so far where God sets up the reasons for our gratitude and thanksgiving, even from the very beginning, because the way that God had made this entire creation was for our good and his glory, and we were supposed to live in light of that. However, sadly, mankind rebelled against God and said, no, I don't want these good things that you've given me. Instead, I want to pursue my own lust, my own desire, my own covetousness. And because of that, sin, death, pain entered into the world and ultimately ungratitude and a lack of thanksgiving. And as Brian has pointed out, Jesus is the perfect model as we see in Luke, the gospel that emphasizes his humanity. He is the perfect human model of gratefulness and thanksgiving. We see that not only in his own life, but ultimately through the shedding of his blood, he allows then us through the Holy Spirit to then share in that same spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving, that same spirit that was lost in the garden. Mm. So I want us to turn to Colossians uh, as we look as how we're supposed to live that out in our own lives. Colossians chapter 1, we're going to be reading verses 9 through 14. Colossians chapter 1, beginning here. 
And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, that you may be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Christ's death was not only to be our Savior from an eternity spent, well, not even really away from God, but actually uh, an eternity spent under the judgment and wrath of God, but instead Christ's sacrifice was also then coupled with his Lordship, that we are supposed to be living in light of his perfect example and sanctification, and that lives itself out in the areas of gratitude and thankfulness in our lives. We are supposed to have an attitude of gratitude, as fun as that sounds, because Christ had that. And we are supposed to live lives of thankfulness for the good and perfect gifts that come from above. So our next set of prayer points now focuses not on the aspect of repentance and asking for forgiveness, but now the implementation of gratitude and thanksgiving in our life and then cultivating that in a very intentional way. And so as you look through these prayer points and you take a couple of minutes to read them and pray uh, through them, uh, I would encourage you, and one of the encouragements you're going to receive in those prayer points is, is to not leave this aspect of thankfulness and gratitude here. Uh, you know, uh, I often see, and uh, they're well-meaning and well-intentioned, and I'm glad we do them. I want you to understand this isn't a criticism of individuals who do this uh, on social media or on blogs or things like that. But we really take some time to give an aspect of thankfulness and gratitude during uh, the Thanksgiving season. Often you'll see 30 or 31 days of Thanksgiving or something like that that then precedes coming into the Christmas season. That's good. I'm glad we do that. However, I, I wish for myself and for all of us that we would keep that same attitude of praise and thanksgiving through the entire year, not just pick it up and then put it back down during the month of November here on our American calendar. And so as you work through these next prayer points, take some time to not only speak to God in a broad way about your thanksgiving and praise for him, but then uh, come to him and, and pray about this aspect of, again, with a very intentional heart and mind, cultivating gratitude and praise and thanksgiving in your life through the entire year. So let's go ahead and take a couple of minutes to pray.
Well, again, thank you for being with us tonight. I hope this was an encouragement to you. And uh, as we look at our, uh, towards our study next week in gratitude, we would invite you to be back with us at 7 p.m. And again, for those who are not able to be with us, this is always, uh, they're living on our YouTube uh, channel and you can come back and grab it at any time you want. Now, before I go, let me uh, encourage you, if you haven't done so already, uh, to pull up and look at the newest prayer prompter that we've provided for you today. There are going to be a number of important things on that, but there are also some emergent needs. Uh, and when I use the word emergent, I don't necessarily mean it's an emergency, but rather they're, they're sudden and they're new. So uh, emergent needs, uh, health needs specifically for some of the people um, in our church family, as well as some other emergent needs that live outside the physical realm. So again, I want to encourage you to pull that up, read those and, and check into those. If you have any questions about those uh, new prayer requests or you want to follow up uh, with uh, how those, uh, those emergent uh, health needs were met and how they came out, uh, feel free to call the office and we'll try to give you as much of an update as possible. So again, I want to thank you for being with us tonight and hope you have a blessed, blessed evening. And uh, if he doesn't come back before then, we will all see you this Sunday.